Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at a couple of ranked 2v2 games that happened during the RLCS line in Sweden. And in this first of two, we're going to be watching Dries and Lorley take on Ahmad and Jorias. So we're on P uh, POV with Dries for this one. And uh, in the next game, we're also going to be able to see some Ahmad, Dries and Lorley gameplay. But um, Jorias will be subbing out for another player. So stay tuned if you want to know who that is. Um, but yeah, I wanted to pick out this replay in particular because... Dries, I think, had a phenomenal LAN in Sweden. I think that uh, G2 had a pretty tough run through the bracket, losing to Sandrock Gaming, losing to Furia, and then eventually losing to Endpoint to be eliminated in Swiss. Um, I, I reckon they were probably... I'd power rank them ninth at the whole event, which is, uh, you know, a bit unlucky because uh, given another bracket draw, given a different run through the uh, event, they, they could probably have made it out of there. In fact, in the Swiss stage, I'd probably put them in the top eight. I don't think that, uh, you know, some of the teams that qualified, well, namely NRG, looked that great in the Swiss. I think G2 could have uh, had a good chance of beating them. It's only in the playoffs that NRG really uh, popped off and stepped it up a notch. But uh, Dries especially, I've been talking about him uh, quite a lot, you know, online and uh, especially in the LAN. You know, this guy's been really impressing me and um, I was really surprised to hear so many people talking about potentially um, you know, G2 needing to get rid of him in the offseason. His uh, RLCS Season X, I think, was a great look to uh, Dries' ability. We all know he's got ridiculous potential as well. And it looked like G2 were having fun. It looked like they were um, making progress together. Oh, a couple of good, good save attempts there. Good uh, block by Dries initially. Lorely didn't have momentum to get behind the ball. And Ahmad puts himself in Joria's one goal ahead. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I, I can't talk about this topic enough. I was really surprised that anyone was talking about benching Dries. It was G2 fans, Rocket League fans in general. And, uh, you know, also well-known people in the in the Rocket League scene, not just uh, fans. But um, I thought, uh, you know, it made sense for G2 to keep him. And especially after seeing how well he performed in the first major, the first line in two years. Um, it's just a no-brainer that they, they have got to keep uh, grinding with this roster. And, uh, you know, Chicago, for me, was the one who had a bit of a disappointing line. I know the high standards he keeps for himself, he's not going to be happy with how he performed. And JNAPS took a while to get going. He uh, did look good later on in the uh, Swiss stage, but early on it was Dries who was really just uh, making G2 look competitive. Oh, look at him go here. <laughs> what a play by Dries! What we took Jory as an Avad. That is, uh, you know, pretty similar to the opening goal that G2 scored in the RLCS LAN. Um, Dries getting a flip reset right at the end of an air dribble that he could just catch up to the ball with. And uh, that was against Sandro Gaming, so really, really great goal it was if you didn't see it. But yeah, I, I rate uh, Dries have for a long time. As you all know, I like my uh, my 1v1 mains. Uh, well, we call them 1v1 mains. Uh, in a good way, obviously, <laughs> all of the 1v1, anyone who's ever a 1v1 main and transitioned to 3v3 is, of course, now a 3v3 mid, but Dries has got that 1v1 background, he's incredibly mechanical, seems like he's got his, uh, you know, head firmly between his shoulders, and with the, you know, the experience that they've got, although they'd lost in the recent LAN, I think that they're going to be able to learn from that. Now, that was actually a pretty good bump by Ahmad. I'm going to rewind this here because it looked like a bad takeoff for Dries, but uh, let's take another look at what happened here. So Dries looking to line it up. I'm pretty sure Ahmad bumped him. We're going to go back and watch Ahmad's POV on this. Oh, no, he actually just missed. <laughs> the, the replay lagged. I wanted to give him a little bit of copium here, but it, wow, that's a really weird look, actually, at what happened. Is it right here? Don't know why it did that. The, the replay looked like it jolted Dries' car forward, but he did misread that either way. Um, and Ahmad coming in behind him, able to get the goal. Now, I don't usually rewind, and I don't usually pause first run-throughs of these replays. If anybody's new to these, uh, usually when I watch ranked replays, I just let it play all the way through at least once and maybe go back at the end. But that was a moment that I thought, oh, hold on a second. I want to know what happened there. Was that actually uh, what it looked like, or was it not? Turns out it was not. So 2-1 deficit here. Dree's going to offload to Lorley. Lorley, a European player. He's from Turkey. He is another player who's well known for his um, ones grind and recently been making more of a name for himself in 2v2 as well. I think everybody would call Dries and Lorley the underdogs in this particular matchup, especially with Ahmad playing the Fennec, because you know that's uh, going to bring the 50-50ist, sweatiest Ahmad out that is possible. Great read by Dries. Keep the ball out of the corner. 
Lots of defensive flip resets being utilized by this guy as well. And uh, now he's sitting back to follow up on Lorley's play and will equalize. Lovely little pass there by Lorley to center the ball. Dries had a good approach coming from the far post side. Now they're actually going to fake the kickoff. Don't think that was uh, communicated though because Lorley's also failed to go for it. Dries showing faith in Lorley's defense here. Decides it's time to get boost and that is a brilliant 50-50 by Lorley. Really up against it there. Had to buy quite a lot of time. Dries did leave him for a fair length of it. There's so much work being done by Dries. It's worth mentioning this replay and the next one we're going to watch are actually from the start of uh, Dries' time in Sweden. You can see that uh, it's not the very start though because Ahmad also has 40 ping so this is just I think day one of the land could save there. Jory is trapping the ball in the corner. Dries with a nice boost seal is going to keep the pressure on. No flip to work with yet. Of course he goes for one even though it looked impossible to make anything work. Now the 50-50 it's on target and in! Just like that. Dries and Lurley are headed. Jory is out of here. Whoa! Jory, <laughs> Jory is what's going on? <laughs> I don't believe it. Jory is leaves. I didn't know that he was going to leave here. I thought it was going to be a forfeit. <laughs> Oh no, now everybody's going to think that I uh, that I picked out this replay just a real story is what on earth happened? How <laughs> is Jory has decided that it's time to leave? Oh my, he just got completely ball chased on. That's really good to see from Dries. You know, we've been criticizing NA. Uh, we've been criticizing uh, players and teams for being a bit too passive. Well, look at Dries here. His teammates demoed. What does he do? Does he, does he retreat? Does he try to buy time? No, he turns around to the spot and 50-50s it into the net and tilts Jorius so hard that Jorius just leaves the game. Now, I'm pretty sure that that has, that has to be a leave game because since it goes back to a kickoff here, if this was a, uh, you know, if Ahmad had also voted far for the game, it would be over. So the fact that Jorius left here, he's taken the five-minute timeout uh, for this loss. I didn't know that that happened because uh, on, the, on the little... Uh, uh, and the, uh, there's a ballchasing.com timeline for the game. Uh, it was so close to the end of the game that this happened. So sorry, Jory, is for exposing you here. You've left Ahmad one goal down with, the t uh, with two seconds of the clock. I'm sure Ahmad wanted to go for some cheeky kickoff strategy equalizer, but Jory has got so tilted from that Dries 50-50 that he is done. Uh, alternatively, you know, if you're uh, once uh, you know uh, another timeline, another story, perhaps that could explain Joria's early departure here. Maybe his team are shouting him that dinner's ready and that he has to come uh, get it, and he's thinking, okay, well, we've lost, <laughs> GGS. But well played by Dries. Uh, I'll just you know skip to the end of this one so we can get there. It is the thousand point game for Dries. Three goals, six saves. Lorley did uh, quite a lot of work in this one as well, though. It wasn't, uh, you know, all Dries. He got the goals and the saves, but Lorley was doing a lot of work on the ball to um, get Dries free touches on it. Um, so well played to him. Anyway, let's get into the second game. These three that you currently see on your screen will be in it, but Dory is, says he's, he's got the uh, five-minute timeout, will not be in this game. All right, here we go. Another game. Jory is stuck in the main menu, but here's 23, a player that I'm not familiar with, but he's got 104 ping which means that uh, he is either connecting to EU from Middle East or from US East, I'd guess Middle East. We're at, we're at Ahmad POV here, he's looking for revenge on Dries. Um, but Lorley switched teams, Lorley saw that uh, you know, Ahmad needed a teammate, he saw that Dries has left him alone, so he, th he uh, you know, decided to team hop and uh, prove that he is the carry. He didn't like that Dries dropped a thousand points in the game, making him look bad. So now he's going to team up with Ahmad and uh, try and take him down. Um, and also take down 23 Dot. And open up miss for Dries there, tight angle nonetheless. So it was quite a tri uh, tricky one. Uh, I did notice the car change for Ahmad. He wasn't liking the, the Fennec. He didn't uh, like that. You know, they were definitely um, getting their boost denied quite a lot in that last game. Dries was zooming around the field. So Ahmad switching it up to the Octane. Usually when he does this, you're going to see more flair. You're going to see more... Um, aggression out of this guy so it is interesting to watch the the difference in play style that a car change can make octane fennec i think the uh the main one because they're the same hitbox but they play so differently or at least the players who tend to switch between them really have a big change in their play style focusing on outplays rather than the 50 50 and challenge game uh when you do go to the uh to the octane good read there by 
Ahmad not committing too high to the back wall. 23 just committing because he knew that he could at least get a 50-50 with Ahmad there. It's a good read by him. Dries seeing Ahmad moving forward. Centers, but great pass by Lorley. Now Ahmad on the counter attack. Tight angle shot. Blocked by 23. If anybody knows anything uh, about this player, 23, uh, maybe you recognize the profile picture. I'm not sure if he just changed his name to 23 for this game. Um, if anybody knows who this is, do let me know in the comments. I was not able to find his account, um, or at least find out who he was. Maybe I could check ball chasing actually after this. I'll, I'll see if I can find this replay again. But uh, yeah, might put that in the uh, in a pinned comment if I can do any digging after this video is done being recorded. I'm trying to chip the ball into the curve there to set up a rebound for himself. Did not bounce the way that he wanted. See that he's definitely looking for those clean-out plays, though, again and again. And then trying to hit the ball past opponents without them getting a touch. And it's a big change from the Fennec, like I said, where you're more happy to just barrel through players whether or not they're in the way. Ahmad trying to boost steal on spawn there. Looks like 23 picked it up right afterwards. Ahmad coming back in just in case he completely missed time to boost respawn. But 23 got it. Therese with a fake challenge now. Takes the ball with them into the safe corner. Solid challenge as well. Look at Dries going all the way himself. 1v2. But Lorley able to deny him the equalizer. Another shot that's going a bit too far across the box for Dries. He missed an open net from the other side by shooting too much of an angle on it. Now makes it a bit easier for Ahmad to save. Ahmad waiting to see whether Lorley's going to pass to him here. Lorley does not, but he just air dribbles in with a 50-50. Makes it 2-0. Great uh, uh, challenge on the goal line there by Lorley. Forced the air dribble in. Love that Ahmad was waiting for Lorley to decide what he wanted to do. Because some players will immediately ping that ball middle if they don't have the best lineup for a long range air dribble. But of course it's very common in 2v2 to just go for the solo play in that position. It's not wrong even if you've got an option in field to, uh, to do that. Oh, what a play by Ahmad. Wow, that is a crazy shot. And he's going to back pass to Lurley as well. Full 360 air roll and a couple of touches on it as well. That's going to be a forfeit. And we need to see this one again from Dries POV. Ahmad holding on to the dodge for just about as long as he can. And the big disconnect between 23 and Dries gave him the space to completely outplay them. So right here, 23's demoed. Dries out of boost. And there's... No big boost for him in the midfield, and he decides that he will just go for the big boost in the back corner. So this is a clear disconnect between what the players are wanting to do. 23 wants to pressure the ball. He wants to stay in offense. He wants Dries to turn around here and, uh, you know, go middle, but he doesn't know Dries is completely out of boost. Now, could Dries have turned with uh, small boost pads? Maybe. But we saw in the last game that he was quite um, set on just sitting back. That last touch by Ahmad is absolutely ridiculous here. The fact that he's able to dodge late into the ball and then air dribble off that uh, shot. Somehow not messing up the back pass as well. Really well played by uh, Ahmad and Lorley at the end of this one. Um, but yeah, like, you know, if, if you're on the same page as your teammate, I think last game, Dries and Lorley were both quite happy to just play defensively. Um, and Lorley didn't really run off into the other uh, team's half too much, leaving Dries completely isolated at the back. But of course, when you're up against a player like Ahmad or Jory is in the last game, you don't want to ever leave somebody alone at the back, no matter who, who they are, no matter how good they are at that 1v1 defense. Um, it's better because you've got two players in your team to use both of them to defend. One pressure of the ball, one defend the net. But uh, definitely a bit of a disconnect. 23 wanting to play aggressively, wanting to go um, and uh, push for the comeback trees. Bit more patient, no rush yet. And, you know, it wasn't an urgent situation. The, the one minute plus uh, time remaining does, uh, you know, warrant more uh, patience, I would say, than uh, if there was 30 seconds left in a two-goal deficit. But overall, really interesting games here. Um, Dries able to get Jorius to rage quit. That's uh, definitely quite funny. And, uh, we've got to slap that in the title, I reckon, even though I didn't know that we were going to be watching that when we started the video today. And uh, we see Ahmad switching up the car, switching up the play style, getting mechanical with it. 
and making it work. But Lorley actually the, the real winner here, winning both games. He won with threes, switched teams, wins with Ahmad. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for this guy. He's uh, very mechanical. He's uh, he's definitely a grinder. He's starting to get higher rated in 2v2. He's always been there or thereabouts in 1v1. So um, you can expect to see more of him. That is 68 ping connection from Turkey, right next to uh, the Middle East, for anyone who's not geographically aware. But... Um, uh, yeah, he'd, he'd be allowed to play an EURLCS because Turkey is in Europe. So he, he might uh, one day make an appearance. I don't know what his uh, team situation or 3v3 uh, situation is, but definitely keep an eye out for him. Um, but that's all we got time for for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, if you're enjoying the ranked uh, videos uh, or, you know, have popped up because of uh, the LAN and all the different players in different regions being on one server for a while, uh, do let me know in the comments. I've got, uh, you know, a couple more that I could uh record for you guys if uh, this is content that you enjoy um but uh, show matches will be mixed in there as well as you've seen on the channel in the past few days uh so gonna try and do a bit of both but uh, yeah thanks as always for watching and uh, take care and until the next one um i'll see you around guys